interested in asking about my 16 millimeter cameras. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about them and what kinds of shoots I would use each of them for. So this here is a Bolex Super 16 H16 EL model. And this is one I mainly use because it's probably the easiest out of, out of all of them to use. I used to have a battery pack on the side here, but I took that off and now I just, I run, I use a V-Lock battery with this cable, cable that I've made. Put that on the side. And I made this light switch. I'll roll it with that. If it works okay. Another reason why the battery ones are so good is you can run the whole roll of film through the camera in one long take. Not like some of the other ones I'll show you, the wind up ones. You only get 30 or 45 seconds out of the spring. So you can't, you can't do a long take. Another thing with this one is it's got a par focal zoom lens. So I'll just zoom all the way in, get focus, zoom back out and reframe the shot. Which is good for documentary if you're shooting uh, non-actors. You don't want to be getting a tape measure and putting that out and putting it in front of their face. It's also got a built-in light meter at the top here, which is, it'll just show you if you're under or overexposed with a little red light inside. And I don't, I don't really use the Sekonic style light meter that much anymore. I've, I've gotten quite used to just using this. and I know where, just looking in the eyepiece, where the exposure sits. Or if not, I could just get a digital stills camera and take a photo with the same settings as this. But I wouldn't really do that much anyway. So this next one is a regular 16 millimeter uh, H16 reflex model. And this one is, is pretty common one that you can find online, but it is becoming less and less common to find these around. And you can get it converted to Super 16 if you want, but I haven't done that. I just use my other camera if I, if I want that wider frame. But this one's really great for traveling or if you want to put it on a gimbal. I've put it on a Ronin S a few times and it works really good on that. If you want to monitor it, if you're using a gimbal, you can strap your phone to the back here and put it in photo mode and look through it that way. It's a bit clunky, but it works pretty good. It's better than nothing. I've also got these beautiful Kern 16 millimeter prime lenses with it. I've got a 75 millimeter uh, 25 and a 10 millimeter. All three of these cameras go up to 64 frames a second, all the way down to one frame, which was used for stop motion back in the day. Or you could just shoot photos, shoot thousands of photos on 16 millimeter. This last one is an underwater housing for a Bolex, which I bought a couple of years ago from a guy. And it's ingeniously made with all these rods in it to operate the camera. Inside of it is a Bolex regular 16 millimeter camera, uh, non-reflex model. So it doesn't have an eyepiece, but you don't need one anyway with this because you can't see through it. You can just put on a really wide lens, like a 10 millimeter or wider, and just shoot in the direction, point it in the direction where you want it to, to film. He told me he made it for surfing, and I mean, it's really heavy, but I guess it would just float on the water. You'd point it out of the water. So the camera goes in the front, and it's held in with this little rod from sliding out. It's clipped on. This is the lever to wind it on. And this is the lever to roll the camera. So you never have to get 
out of the ocean or the water. <laughs> Only to change the roll of film. I've only shot a little bit on this, but I hope to shoot a bit more because it's a pretty unique bit of gear to have an underwater housing for a 16mm camera. So shooting on 16mm for me is not always about the grain and the, the colours and the way that it looks. A big part of it is the, the process of shooting film on the day. Um, it's a lot different to shooting digital. You don't have an endless, endless amount of takes to do. So you're a lot more careful with what you're shooting and you can't view it back. So you're left with these sort of imperfections when you're, when you're editing it and you have to use these takes that you wouldn't normally use. And it's not, not as perfect all the time. The edit is so much easier. You just, you just have this one clip, which is 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, however long it is. You just have that and you can just chop that one up. And it's so much easier to, to edit that way. <laughs> It's just a really simple process. Everyone thinks it's quite complicated and hard, but it's a lot easier than digital in a way. So those parts of it are a big reason why I'll choose to shoot it for certain projects if you want the day to go a certain way. Yeah, so let me know if there's any questions about any of the cameras and I'll try and, I'll try and answer any of them. Cool.